Welcome into another edition of the Gig'em 24-7 Sports Podcast. I am Andrew Hattersley, joined as always by Brian Peroni. Brian, how was your weekend? And I know it was a it was another fun one to cover on the baseball side. Oh, it was good. Uh, a little relaxing, and we still got a couple weeks left of the spring evalu- evaluation period. But, uh, you know, after that, summer camps and summer official visits, and then July should be relatively quiet until the last week. And then August is is uh, fall camp. So, I mean, got a lot of stuff coming up. And But July, I mean, we can, we can take some PTO, I guess. Yeah. It kind of feels like the calm before the storm um, in terms of, like you said, camps and um, coming up on, on – June 8th through the 10th, and then the week after that, June 15th through the 17th. Um, coaches have have been on the road as well, um, continuing to hit several spots, um, some checking in on some key targets, and also some new spots as well. Um, and and with that, a lot of a lot of offers went out last week. It felt like just a you know kids in the 2025 and 2026 class. They offered. Um, quarterback out of out of california in the 2026 class and yeah one out of know, one out of arkansas as well i mean two yeah, one out of arkansas two eighth grade qbs i don't Kane think Archer, who i actually who i actually saw this um uh, in january um him and brandon thomas were at uh the next gen camp in dallas and um saw kane archer and has a he has a really quick release um but then heard you know he, class of 2026 and I was I was thinking boy we're we're flying up on that class yeah I mean a, okay A&M is not taking a commitment <laughs> exactly. from an eighth grader at quarterback but doesn't hurt to throw out the offer this early there have been uh okay three quarterbacks I can remember that committed when they were in junior high one was Tate Martell Aggie fans are pretty he committed to Washington Aggie fans know his story then you know eventually committed A&M decommitted went to Ohio State Left Ohio State, went to Miami, left Miami, went to UNLV, and I'm not sure played more than 10 downs of football in college. Uh, another was David Sills. Uh, he committed, he was out of Delaware, committed to USC as a seventh grader, ended up going to West Virginia as a wide res- or as a quarterback, went to junior left West Virginia, went to junior college, went back to West Virginia after junior college, sort of weird deal, ended up becoming an all-American wide receiver. So and then the third was Zadok Dinkelman uh, out of Somerset, Texas. He's the nephew of the Detmers. He committed to LSU as an eighth grader. And LSU ended up sort of moving in a different direction by the time he was a senior. Yeah. Uh, so he had, he went to junior college, and I'm not sure he ever played uh, D1 ball. But those are the those are the three kids that committed as as – or three quarterbacks that committed as in junior high that I can remember. And – Neither uh, – None of them ended up playing quarterback <laughs> at a D1 level. David Sills is the only one that ended up having success, but did so as a wide receiver. Um, you know, not saying that these kids won't be good, but it's way, 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 way too early to take and a commitment from a kid. There is, there is zero harm to it because if if they turn out to be really, really good, you get to turn around and say, well, we offered you as an eighth grader. Oh, for and sure. You've got your, your little, you know, recruiting pitch kind of set up, but – on the other side, you just get to kind of throw your hat in the ring. And like you, I think you mentioned on the board, um, there's zero harm in throwing an arm, uh, throwing an offer out and just being able to say you, you did it early and, and, you know, years and years still to go of, of evaluation on, on that. Um, interesting note on Brandon Thomas. He, um, he hit me up right, probably right after he posted the offer and said he, he, you know, is pretty high on A&M and, and is looking to visit soon. So, um, you know, teammate of Winston Watkins, um, A and M commit. So they've talked about that, and Man, uh, it's it's sort of easy to forget. I forget sometimes that A and M has a a twenty twenty five commit. <laughs> right? I think he's one of only two in the country. But yeah, Winston Watkins out of IMG Academy, wide receiver. He's and picked up, him. you know, Georgia, Ohio State, some big offers since coming yeah, to A M. That one just kind of popped up quickly. You know, started to just hear buzz that it it might be happening, and and the. You know, there we go. They had a 2025 commit, and he's already apparently getting to work. We're doing doing some recruiting for his class, so um, you know, it 
I did remember that when I when I kind of saw that they were teammates. Um, and then a couple other offers that went out last week. I think the, starting with a big one was was Nigel Smith, um, who's been down to A and M a couple times and was kind of getting to the point that I think they needed to offer him with Ohio State and and some of the others that had had offered already. A um, and M joins the mix last week and um, school that he really liked. He didn't manage to get down. Uh, he was hoping to go to the Alabama game last fall and is still kicking himself about not being able to make it down to that game. But <laughs> I think um, every, anybody who missed that yeah. you know, and didn't, didn't end up on the field is, is kicking themselves. It was kind of looking at the highlights afterwards thinking, man, I should have been there for that. Um, but he told me earlier this spring that I think he's eyeing probably coming back for the LSU game, kind of seeing another, you know, big game in Kyle field like that. Um, and I'm offered him. They actually didn't get to see him work out, um, because of star testing, but um, we'll the coaches will definitely be back up to see him quite a few more times. Over yeah, and he next. was uh, he was in town for the spring game, he was in town as well. For the I mean, he's game. a guy that knows that knows College Station, yeah, he knows College Station camp last summer as well. And funny note on him, too, that he actually shared was the AM staff was actually trying to, and I, I think I texted you about this, Brian. was the a m staff was trying to come up and see him in, in January and accidentally went to Melissa Middle School instead of Melissa oh, yeah. High School <laughs> and shared with them that the offer might have come earlier if they had if they had kind of gone to the wrong high if they had gone to the correct high school because they they kind of looked around and thought, what the heck? Like, where are we? And 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 what is Melissa? Um, but so Nigel you know, Smith's an interesting an interesting offer, though. He, yeah. I mean, you see him in person. He's six foot five, two hundred sixty, defense lineman from sort of a small school in Melissa. You know, the town's grown. Uh, but his dad is six ten and played basketball at SMU. Yeah. So you know, there's a chance uh, Nigel gets even taller. But he, if he doesn't, I mean, he's still got this huge wingspan, and he doesn't like to hear this, but. You know, I have heard, you know, some some schools like him as a potential offensive tackle. And, I mean, you can't build that frame. You know, you can't coach that frame if you get that in, especially if he keeps growing a bit. Uh, you know, he was the, I believe, the district defensive player of the year. Uh, you know, so he had 20 tackles for loss and 10 sacks on defense. So really good player on defense. But, I mean, it's intriguing to him as a possible uh, offensive lineman as well. Yeah, if he grows to six seven, six eight, I mean, he kind of develops into that kind of perfect offensive tackle frame that we we talk so much about. And yeah, he's had about as good a two years as you can ask for on the on the um, on the defensive line front, just from for Melissa. And no reason to expect he he probably won't have a really big year again. And you know, I think A and M is definitely going to be in the mix there. He really really likes T Terry Price um, as has great things to say whenever I talked about Jimbo Fisher and their development of defensive line, but you're right. I mean, if, if he grows to six, seven, six, eight, um, he does seem like the type of kid who, who, you know, kind of understands, understands the game and understands, you know, if I grow to six, eight, maybe I do fit better as an offensive lineman. Um, kind of, he seems like he would, he would be open to that down the, probably down the line, but would be interesting. Yeah, so I, I remember him at camp last summer and, so last summer was the first time they had, they they didn't have camps the year before, obviously yep. because of COVID. So and also Nick Williams was brand new to the A and M staff last summer. So Nick Williams is working with defensive linemen. He gets Hydro Smith in, who at the time is six four, six five, two hundred forty five pounds or so. He says, well, you know, how old are you? And he said, I'm a freshman. <laughs> and uh, he's just like, wait, have we offered you? You know, I mean, Nick was brand new. You know, yeah. have we offered you? And Nigel said no. And Nick's like, well, we got to change that. So, I mean, he he immediately, I mean, he's, yeah, you know, I can tell talent. I, you know, this big guy jumps off the page. So, <laughs> and yeah, obviously, yeah. you know, AM and m really liked him. Nigel's first offer was from Notre Dame, the very first offer. Notre Dame came in town last spring. Uh, I don't think he had even played on varsity yet, or if he did, it was limited. Nope. But uh, it was interesting. They showed, uh, you know, Melissa, a small town, has an indoor facility. And uh, th there was a video. They announced his Notre Dame offer to the entire school over the loudspeaker. So there was a video that showed him announcing it over the loudspeaker. And then everybody just, like, dogpiling Nigel, you know, in the indoor facility. It was sort of a cool deal for him as a freshman. That's that's awesome. I, I, I haven't seen that video. But um, on that indoor facility, I did get the chance – to uh, to take a tour of that facility last year, 
and it is probably one of the nicest facilities I've seen just in terms of the locker room and, and film rooms and everything in there. It is, it is really, really, really nice. So, um, and I know they are, they are growing big time and it's also going to be interesting on Melissa, um, obviously moving up to, to, to 5A this year uh, to see how they, how they perform moving up a level. I know that's been a big talk around the program this, this spring. Um, then another I think I close to double digit, uh, double digit college prospects in their senior class alone. So, I mean, it'll, yeah. I think they'll do just fine. And, and looking at, I mean, Trevor Grosby is another one that, that we've talked quite a bit about. I know you and I both really like him and um, they've, they've got some really good players in that coming up through there and um, they've got, they've just got a ton of talent. So I think they'll, they'll be fine as well. Um, and looking at another new offer from last week, I know you had the chance to speak to him was Harry Stewart. Um, a guy that has has some Texas A&M ties and um, is starting to see his recruitment pick up in a big way as well right now. So, yeah, Harry Stewart plays for a Frisco school, but not one of the Frisco schools that sees a ton of recruiters come through. He goes to Centennial and, uh, you know, they have not produced much as of late. And I think that's that's being kind. It's just, you know, Frisco ISD is just booming and, you know, they haven't, you know, it, it, Every time a new school opens, it sort of it draws from other schools. And so Centennial hasn't had the success on the gridiron that others have. But Harry Stewart, as a freshman in the 2000 season, the COVID season, he was the uh, offensive newcomer of the year, ran for, you know, I think 900 yards and averaged uh, 11 and a half yards a carry. Uh, followed it up with a sophomore campaign where he was a unanimous first team all district. And doing that behind, you know, an offensive line that doesn't have D1 guys or D2 or three guys i mean just you know running behind whoever uh is is really impressive he also showed the ability to catch the ball and as a freshman he was about 5'8 170 pounds he's now up to you know 5'9 or 5'10 but 205 pounds runs track he's fast uh you know he's a he's elusive you know when you watch him when you watch him run his film shows a guy that if he gets to the edge you know he can be gone but he's also uh, can run between the tackles, you know, can run over guys, can lower his shoulder and uh, get, you know, yards after contact. Uh, really mature kid. And he has Baylor and A&M, but when they, with the A&M offer, it really opened up. You know, uh, he said all of a sudden he got a bunch of other schools following him that day. Uh, Texas had gone by the same day to watch him. Wouldn't be surprised if they offered. But, yeah, he's got a Tice a and He's got an aunt and uncle who are both professors at A&M. His mom went to OU, you know, so if OU offers that, she's she'll probably be in, uh, I was about to say Lincoln Riley's corner. OU fans yeah. don't want to hear that. Ooh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. yeah. All right, Brent, Brent Venable's corner. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, wide open. He's going to camp at A&M this summer. He's been before. So, uh, yeah, just, you know, so in that class, that's a good running back class, and they've now offered Brian Jackson from McKinney, you've seen, uh, Jeremy Payne from Fort Bend Hightower, who, Oh man, he had a great underclassman camp in Houston, one of the quickest kids I've seen. And then Harry Stewart. So I think it shows how much they like Stewart that he was, you know, one of the first guys they offered and that they were willing to be just that second offer for him, you know, with only Baylor, you know, AM trust their evaluations. Yeah, and you you mentioned but coaches love to play the game of of kind of following other other schools. Oh, yeah. They they love that. So it wouldn't be surprised to see his his recruitment pick up. And you're right. I think that was going to be my next extra point is I think you have seen kind of those three guys emerge as probably the top kind of in-state targets in terms of, in terms of the three that they're, they're going after in terms of Brian Jackson, Jeremy Payne and, and Harry Stewart. And um, Brian Jackson is a, is a guy that they definitely like a lot and is going to try to get back down to saying him this summer and, you know, look at, a, a look at a Ohio state as well. Um, the school he wants to get out and see. And so, um, that's a kid that's he's even as a sophomore in high school, he's sort of built like Isaiah Spiller already. I yeah, mean, he's 225 yeah. pounds and you know, runs doesn't run like a 225 pounder, if that makes sense. I mean, he runs like a big kid, but I was surprised that he, he was that big. Yeah, no, and he, you know, he he just looks kind of built in the upper body and in the arms and the shoulders and um, really looks like he carries it well, and so. Um, I know he was sitting out the practice that I went to for precautionary reasons, but I think it was like a shoulder or something like that, but um, wouldn't be a shock to see him have another, have another huge year. Um, and then looking at a couple other guys, speaking of visits that have set up visits for 
for June. Um, we talked about the offensive line last week and uh, another name that, that is going to be interesting to see where things kind of go over the next month or two is Miles McVay um, was not, Anum was not on his top list of schools originally, but um, things have kind of picked up there of late. And he, uh, he announced last week that he'll be taking an official visit to AM on June 3rd through the 5th, which is kind of a week before, um, you know, the big group of linemen come in after him, but uh, should probably allow AM to really kind of lock in on, on building a relationship with him and, and, and starting to build momentum there. But, um, you know, his recruitment is kind of picking up, picking up with some, with, with, with some schools in there. And a um, and is certainly one of those ones that's kind of re-engaged. I oh, know for sure. So offensive tackle and wide receiver, the two spots that, you know, I think most fans are really looking at in this class and that, you know, it's, it's like you could almost put names in a hat and just see, you know, what's going to, what's going to happen at this point. I mean, we've talked yeah. at length on multiple episodes of this, of, uh, you know, offensive tackle, you're looking for, you know, a guy that can play that position. Well, McVay's a guy that can. Yeah. I mean, he's a big kid, uh, you know, 358, 6'6", 358. Now, you don't want him probably to play any bigger than that. You probably want him to lose a little weight. But his film's really impressive, and he's a guy that can stay at tackle. He's not a guard. So, uh, also from East St. Louis, uh, same high school as Antonio Johnson. Now, they're, what, uh, three, three years apart. So, you know, they went to high school together one year, so it's not like they have that huge tie, but it is, you know, sort of an in, and you can bet that they'll have Antonio Johnson in his ear when he's in town. Um, so yeah, the fact that a and went from off his list to now getting a visit now, I do, I mean, not every situation is going to work like this, but last year, Walter Nolan put out a top five, no A&M, yeah. a top three, no A&M came on an unofficial visit. Now all of a sudden a new top three with a and <laughs> and then we saw what happened. a and you know, number two player in the country. Yeah. A&M ended up signing them, you know, so went from outside of his top group to, to the favorite really quickly. So uh, wouldn't rule it out with McVeigh. He's got a whole bunch of other visits scheduled too, though. He's got an Alabama one in October, uh, Michigan state one after, you know, in June, a Florida one in October. So not a guy that's, that's probably going to make a decision while in town, but you can bet that A&M is going to work to try and get him back in town for, for a visit in the, in the fall. Yeah. Kind of lay the groundwork. And you mentioned that advantage of, of Antonio Johnson, just the idea that, you know, he's going to be able to speak to life transitioning from, from a, from East St. Louis to A&M and, and just what's that like. And that's going to be an advantage that A&M will certainly be able to play. And I know fans hate it when, when kids uh, release a top list and say, you know, you know, still open to all schools. Still open, yeah. Here's my top 37, but I'm open to, <laughs> yeah, to exactly. anybody but else at all. It goes to show there's, there's, you know, there's cases every year where things sometimes change. New schools come in. and I know, just looking at it, I mean, I think last year, so Walter Nolan, we talked about Evan Stewart, I believe. Evan Stewart, one, yeah. At least one of his lists he didn't have, you know, A&M on it. Yeah. You know, we've covered that. He just, you know, the passing game and everything just wasn't into it. Yeah. He was. And but even uh, look at a guy like, you know, a guy like I don't know if Shamar Stewart is another guy that I don't know that AM was initially on his his top list of schools. And then kind of over the summer we started to hear more that AM had started to gain traction with him. And um, you know, and there's so much time to go before a national signing day that um, you know, a a top schools list in early April or early or mid April is 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 so much can change between then and December that no, unless a kid um, has a commitment date and it's for this summer. Yep. Yeah. The, the top yeah. schools, uh, you know, we, we talked about this again with John T. cook, Alabama didn't make his, yep. his list. I'm we're not buying that Alabama's <laughs> out of it. So yeah, yeah it, it goes the other way too. But yeah, if a kid's not, if a commitment isn't imminent, then you, that those top schools lists are very, they, they're in flux for sure. Yeah. They can change. And yeah, and like you mentioned, so Alabama, he's got fish, official visits scheduled to Alabama on October 8th, uh, Michigan State, June 17th, and Florida on October 15th. And then um be interesting to see if Oklahoma is maybe a school that, that is also very much in the mix and um, if they can get him in town on an official visit as well. But 35 offers overall and, and definitely one of the more coveted guys in the class. And then another guy that, um, speaking of things kind of coming together quickly, was is Xavier McLeod. Um, he'll visit next month on June 3rd and 4th and then head to Oklahoma on June 5th and 6th. Another guy that just picked up an offer from A&M and, 
and then has been able to work their way into the mix for us. Yeah, you could tell. I mean, Elijah Robinson wants himself a nose tackle. And, yeah. you know, there's been two relatively recent offers. Xavier McLeod, who's from uh, from South Carolina, and also Jamal Jarrett from North Carolina. Both of them are just big dudes in the middle, and yeah. both are planning to visit A&M. Uh, Jamal Jarrett hasn't set up a date yet, but I expect him to take an official. That's another guy. He made a top list, A&M offered, I think, the next day. And now he's talking about making a new top list. So he had a top 10. So <laughs> it's a top 11 now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Xavier McLeod, a lot of people expect him to end up in state, saying, you know, playing for the Gamecocks. But, you know, he's paying for his own trip out to AM. He's also going to go to Oklahoma on the same trip, but paying for his own trip out to those two schools. So I'd say that he has a very legitimate, legitimate interest, you know, no in, in both those programs. And that's a big dude. I mean, 6'4, 325 in the middle. Uh, he still, he had, you know, 25 QB hurries or something like that. Bunch of tackles for loss, you know, for, for a big guy. He's been on varsity for three seasons and was an all state performer the past two years. So, I mean, big dude in the middle can move and that's what A&M is looking for. They're looking at that. And we've noticed, you know, some, some true edge offers this year, not, you know, real hybrid guys, true guys that are going to put their hands down, but aren't 270 pounds, you know, not the DeMarvin Leal, role you know we're seeing the Chandavian Bradley and and guys like that um you know so big guy in the middle quick guy in the edge you stop the run you get to the get to the passer I mean th- those guys are really valuable to AM this year yeah and then you know it's, it's it's one of those things they're gonna and you know if you like you mentioned 17 tackles for a loss and uh you know outside of a couple of visits here and there it seems like he's kind of taking his, his, his process slow um and and things things are kind of wide open with him. A and M certainly not not late on being able to get in the mix with him. And um, you know you kind of get him on get him on campus and see if that's maybe a guy that that can't return in the fall for an official visit and um, start to pick up momentum. Maybe you get him back for the pool party a month later um, and start to think pick things back up from there. I I think A and M's kind of got this down where you know recruit for for the get them on campus for the first visit, get him to come back for a guy like him for the pool party and then, and then try to get him back during the fall. And um, that formula has worked well for them of late. Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, and I mean, we're seeing that I mentioned wide receiver. I mean, the wide receiver yeah. uh, list, you know, so we, we talked about John Tay Cook ad nauseum. We know A&M loves John Tay Cook, wants John Tay Cook in. Uh, in June, they have a visit from Adam Hopkins, which, you know, is a guy they really like out of Georgia. They had him at camp last summer. Uh, if he makes it in for that official as scheduled, you know, I think it, it would be surprising if he did not end up on the commitment list, but also a guy that has impressive DB film and they've talked to about potentially playing DB if things work out. But now Andrew Ivins and I believe, uh, yep. I believe uh, Wilt Pong Steve both Wilpong, put yeah. in uh, crystal ball predictions for Akeem Williams to a yep. national top 100 kid from Fort Lauderdale that a and loves and has had in uh, a couple times. And also, so Andrew Ivins just dropped a pretty big uh, nugget that Brandon Ennis, the nation's yeah. top uh, top wide receiver, he was a very early Oklahoma commit until uh, until opening things back up after Lincoln Riley left. People thought he'd end up at USC. Now people thought, you know, he'd end up, you know, at Ohio State. Some people think, well, uh, now Brandon Ennis is talking about visiting A and M. So. You know, and then Jalen Brown, a five star from yeah. uh, South Florida, has also uh, visited before and is talking about visiting again. Shelton Sampson has uh, from uh, Louisiana, five star, has A and M in his top group. So it went from you know uh, you wondering who is A and M going to get or take a wide receiver yeah. to now, you know they could have uh, their pick of guys. I mean, it's going to be interesting to watch. Yeah, they and and one thing that that you and I have talked about, you know, on the board and and you know, between us at nauseum, there's no question they're targeting speed. And that's, that's been like kind of the focus the last year or two. And Hakeem Williams is interesting. He, he, you know, kind of mentioned that um, I think he said that his official visit was probably going to come. He was looking at maybe during the fall now, um, but he talked about a lot of people are going to be in town for that Miami weekend. That's, yeah, that's you know, going to be, be a huge game. That's going to be a huge game just in terms of, especially with how A&M recruits, Florida, I know. Uh, oh yeah, you're gonna have a lot of South Florida kids I, who are I in town a, I took, to watch I took a, that. 
I, I took a gander over the other day at the at the Miami board, and you can tell they're they're really gearing up for this game as well, and and being able to, you know, face off against A and M just with just with Jimbo Fisher making more and more of a presence in that in that Florida area with A and M, and um, he's obviously got a ton of ties down there. You can tell there's going to be a ton on the line when that when that game comes around this fall. But Akeem Williams is really a guy that talked about feeling comfortable in A and M, and and you know credit to you know, it's kind of been a group effort. James Coley is in there. Damian Craig's in there. Brian Gross Armiento's in there as well. And so they've really got a trio of guys um, working on him with South Florida ties uh, and and have kind of put themselves. And I think it's important because, you know, when the thing with Jonte Cook and Texas is very much going to be in the mix until the end. If A&M can at least get Hakeem Williams in the fold and, you know, kind of, kind of protect themselves and 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 get themselves at least one elite top 50 prospect then if you then if you get Dante Cook it's it's it turns into a really 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 good wide receiver class two years in a row but otherwise they've got other options as well and 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 that's a thing that um you know they've kind of like you mentioned with Jalen Brown and uh Brandon Innes you know, they've, they've really put themselves in the mix for a lot of guys to put together a strong receiver class and, and they're targeting the elite guys. You can tell they are trying to just upgrade that room as much as possible right now and, and really go for it. And um, they're not, yeah, it might be like for... defensive line last year. I mean, you could yeah. see, cause just yeah. looking at the receiver rankings, you know, okay, let's see. Uh, Okay, Zachariah Branch is committed to USC number two, but Brandon Ennis, number one, Shelton Sampson, three, Jalen Brown, four, Carnell Tate from IMG Academy has mentioned AM, you know, potentially visiting at five. Yeah. Hakeem Williams is six, Jalen Hill's been on campus, seven, eight, Jonte Cook, Jaquez Petaway's nine. Uh, they've, uh, you know, talked to and, you know, he once had AM as top group. AM is, you know, sort of slowed down a bit, but when, you know, I know that Craig went out to see him again this spring. So that's the top nine guys, yeah, eight out of the yeah. top nine. Have either been to AM or planned to in the near future. You know, and that's 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 was the defensive line class like last year is you know, get those guys on campus, push for them, and you never know what'll happen. And I believe the other one, Steve Wolfong might have had an update on this recently, but I believe Noah Rogers was kind of looking at AM as well. If, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they might be in contact with him. So they're just gonna give themselves a ton of options and um Again, just target as much speed as, as possible and look to become more explosive in the passing game. And or Christian Hamilton, that was the one that I was yeah, Christian right Hamilton. And he was one of the official Hamilton. visitors yep. in uh um and so you know they're just gonna target speed and and you know look to become more explosive in the passing game and, and they're really not gonna settle for 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 a guy that, that maybe you know might be might be a borderline kid or reach in. They they're just gonna go after the elite guys and and really um, look to upgrade that room, um, and so it's it's going to be really interesting. And I wouldn't I wouldn't sleep yet on on Jalen Brown. He's a guy that um, I know he's been looking to get to A and M for quite a while, and you know travel just sometimes has not quite worked out. But uh, you know they're really high on Jimbo Fisher, and and, and that's one when you look and and um, a visit could 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 obviously sway things there, and and they obviously have a lot of a lot of respect for for what Jimbo Fisher has built there and a good relationship. So I would not, I would not count out Jalen Brown just yet. I know Miami is a school that's that's drawn a lot of buzz and he's been on campus a ton. But um, I think A and M could still make things interesting there. And then just one note on on in terms of visitors. Well, actually two notes. Um, Anthony Hill kind of outlined some of his official visits that he's thinking of taking this summer. Um, as he looks towards making a decision this fall and, and mentioned the, the pool party is probably late July is kind of a weekend that, that he was eyeing a visit to A&M and potentially holding his, um, his official visit till the fall. So it's going to, you know, it'll, it'll be interesting to see if A&M is able to do that. And, um, and then Isaiah Robinson, his visit was pushed back from this weekend, but um, you know, just, just the feeling I did get around the program is, and, and being around Arlington Lamar last week is if, if A&M gets, is able to get him on campus and um, they're able to set something up there, A&M can very much still become a factor depending on just how, how things go with Steve Adazio. They've, they haven't met 
Steve Adagio really or got much time to spend with him. So um, depending on how, how that all goes, A&M can very much uh, work themselves into the mix. And I know uh, Isaiah Robinson is looking at probably – Two of his visits, one of his vi- official visits is scheduled to Cal for for next month. And, um, you know, Cal's a school that's basically been been going all out for for Isaiah Robinson and, and made him a huge priority. But, um, you know, a- A&M is, is probably poised if, 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 a good, if a visit goes well to potentially get an official visit. And um, he would like to use a couple of those official visits at least closer to home. Yeah, I mean, uh, Isaiah Robinson was really, really high on in him at one point, and then you know there's a coaching change with the with that. So yeah, once he gets to know Steve Adazio, as long as they gel, uh, you know that'll be that'll be interesting to see. And then you mentioned Anthony Hill, the fact that he so he scheduled four officials. A and M isn't one of them, but he will be at A and M for the pool party and likely spend that whole weekend in town. Which there'll yeah. be a ton of kids spending that whole weekend, which is big. And then he'll return to A and M in the fall, I guess, probably during his bye week or. If they have a Thursday night game, I haven't looked at their schedule yet. But yeah, um, but yeah, Notable. so he'll be back, and that's another guy that I've had a crystal ball in for him for a little while. Steve Wolpong put one in. Uh, you know, he's not on. It's not an imminent commit watch or anything, but uh, A and M is in really good shape with the nation's top linebacker. I mean, uh, he's he likes uh, Santucci a lot, and you know, likes the A and M defense. He likes the the two linebacker, the four two five uh, defense they run. and thinks. He fits really well, so that'll be. He's one to watch. Also, man, he uh, ran. I think he ran in the four by one hundred. He is crazy. In the crazy. state meet, like not just a meet. That's the state meet, which is. I mean, Texas is the fastest state in the country. Them in Florida, but the Texas times are ridiculous. I mean, the four by one and the four by two. I think he saw like three of the top five fastest times, like of all time. And uh, Anthony Hill's running in the four by one at six two, two hundred twenty five pounds. I mean, that's. It's insane. Yeah, he's, he's pretty good. I know there's a there's another board that that might have said he was slow and unathletic. I can I can safely say I don't I don't think that's quite accurate. You know that guy can really really move and plays running back for them too. Is is basically their second running back and um, is elusive on that side of the ball. Saw him take take one for a touchdown against College Station and um, kind of you know be tough to bring down against Longview, some very good defenses playing running back. And so um, his athleticism is off the charts and, and a guy that, that welcomes any challenge he can get. He's, he's got, like you mentioned, he's got his four official visits set. He'll go to Oklahoma first on June 3rd, Alabama on June 10th, uh, USC on June 16th and Texas on June 24th. So those are the, the four official visits he's got scheduled and then mentioned uh, A&M, um, an a and visit probably in late July, which is when we expect the pool party to be like they had last year and kind of use that as the jumping point, jumping off point into the fall. Um, but yeah, a and M's done a really good job with him and um, you know, he's still going to go through the process and, and as a kid that, that, you know, is, is still, you know, kind of likes to evaluate where he fits into the defense and, and understand and, and look at that. But, um, has been on A&M's campus a ton, and and really really likes A&M. Um, so with that, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and take a break, and and after the break, we're gonna t- discuss a little more A&M baseball. Um, c- coming off a big sweep over Mississippi State over the weekend, um, and just one series left now against Ole Miss this weekend with a lot on the line before the SEC tournament. We'll be right back to touch on that and more after this quick break. Welcome back, Brian. Um, got to got to talk a little A and M baseball, and it's it. This team just continues to to find new ways to impress. Uh, no wild comebacks for a little, for the most part this weekend. Does have did have a comeback oh, win? A pair, pair of wild comebacks. I mean, it was it was. Yeah, I mean they were down. They went up four zero on Friday, but then ended up down late, and then had four runs in the. I'm talking the seventh inning Brian. Saturday. Talking, had to come I'm back again. Our, I'm talking our nine nothing 
not not no nine nothing comebacks this weekend, but still some impre- pair of impressive. Oh yeah, no, yeah, nothing no, quite. Yeah, no, quite no like nine that. nothing comebacks yeah. or anything like that, but um, still managed to come back and um, and 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 finish off a sweep over Mississippi State. Um, and again, bats were consistent. Um, for once, Nathan Detner kind of put them in put them in a bit of a hole, and and they managed to climb out of it and. Um, you know, move up to number six in the, in the D one baseball rankings and, you know, kind of really set themselves up. Things are going to get really interesting this weekend tied for first now in the sec West with Arkansas and, uh, a trip on the road to Ole Miss coming up. Yeah. I, I mean, just as everybody had before the season that A&M was going to be ranked number six in the country and second in the sec. I mean, that was on everybody's radar. Um, no, it's been. I mean, the meteoric rise. I mean, we t- yeah. last week they were ten. Week before they were thirteen. Week before they were twenty-one. Prior to that, they weren't ranked at all. So they've gone from not ranked to six in four weeks, just because of how good they've been and clutch hitting for sure. I mean, uh, Troy Kalanch had a had a huge uh, hit on a double on Friday night. Uh, Tar- Ryan Targach had uh, the go ahead double on Saturday. But what's been the most impressive was it was an area that had struggled early in the season, the bullpen. Yeah. So you had Moo Minifee come in. You mentioned Detmer schedule or struggled a bit. Moo Minifee came in and was outstanding on Friday. Uh Chris Cortez, a, a freshman, comes in on Saturday, throws five innings. I mean it like five inning it would have been a save if it I mean it ended up being a, you know the win. Uh and then Will Johnston, a sophomore, also got these. I I don't know if he got the save, the win on Friday night, he but he, he played on Friday yeah. and then came back and got the save uh, yesterday. He had seven outs. Five of them were five of them were strikeouts. I mean, just came in and was mowing people down. So the bullpen has been incredible, and I think only gave up one, maybe two runs all weekend. I mean, that's against Mississippi State, a team that was just bombing home runs off of the starters. I mean, just left and right hitting home runs, came in as one of the top power hitting teams in the country, and the bullpen just got out there and just shut them down. So that's – that's the you need the bullpen. You need starting pitching, obviously. You want, you know, a few guys that can do that. But if the bullpen can keep doing that, and if you, you guys – we talked about eating innings before. I mean, these guys are going innings and they're saving – the rest of the bullpen. I mean, there's arms that haven't. There's really good arms that haven't seen the field, you know, in a couple of weeks because of the fact that, you know, that these guys have just been able to go really long relief. Yeah, and you talk about just a And M being able to, and the and the key is especially the middle relief side, and and with some of these comebacks, just being able to hold the game even within reach, and give a And M a chance to to get going with the bats and and be able to mount these comebacks. Um, it's a testament to to kind of where they've taken strides there this year. And, and, you know, even Ryan Prager delivering four, four and a third innings yesterday of uh, giving up only a run, um, you know, just, just really, you know, it's, it's, it's been different guys every weekend. It feels like we're talking about and um, guys have just been chipping in at different points wherever they can. And, um, you know, has put a and in a position to now, we're playing for quite a bit this weekend, going on the road to Ole Miss again, tied for first in the SEC West with Arkansas, um, and and a chance to to maybe uh, make a bit. You know, Sam had an interesting point over the weekend in terms of where a and positioned, and and every game matters right now. And to be able to finish off a sweep against Mississippi State was was huge. Just the jockeying for position and seating and and super and you know super regional hosts and all that sort of stuff it it was a huge weekend to get a win over it not only get the series win but but be able to sweep mississippi state yeah and so th- this coming weekend is old miss old miss probably helped a&m out uh with rpi and just with uh and even in the human polls perception assuming a&m wins the series this coming weekend by sweeping lsu this past weekend i mean old miss was in, just like mississippi state started the season in the top five, Mississippi State was a defending national champion. Ole Miss wasn't, but started the season ranked in the top five. Had seen its struggles, but is now playing really well. So if AM is able to get a series victory in Oxford this weekend, 
that should pretty much wrap up a top eight seed, give AM a super regional, assuming they make it that far. Uh, which again, just even I mean, I, I joke about it. Yeah, we all predicted this before the season, but even at midseason, even yeah. after after three SEC series, AM did beat LSU in that first one, two out of three, but then lost to Auburn and Alabama. And you kind of thought, okay, they'll go, you know, around 500, maybe, you know, it'll be a good year. Even during, you know, three three series in, but now they've won the last six since then, and are you know ranked number six in the country. Baseball America has A and M number four in the country. You know, once again, as we all predicted, <laughs> predicted it would be. So I mean, it's just crazy. You know, Tennessee has locked up the number one, uh, the number one seed in the uh, SEC tournament, but A and M could get the number two seed. Either way, they're they're going to get two, three, or four, depending on. It's going to be A and M, Auburn, and uh, and Arkansas. Arkansas. We'll do that. Uh, Auburn had its game against Alabama yesterday canceled because of weather, so it's going to you know that actually helps A and M a bit as they they don't have that extra win. You know, assuming yeah. they would have won. So uh, so yeah, A and M is going to have a good seed in the SEC tournament. We'll be able if they could get a couple wins there, we'll be able to to help their case shoot if they could end up playing Tennessee, even though it's one game and, and beating them. I mean, that could just rocket them up the, the uh, seating even further. Yeah. That that'll virtually solidify everything. And, you know, it's, it speaks to where this team is. Um, I know it's, it's Mississippi state and, you know, they, it's a good team, but just to be able to do, to do what was required this weekend with a team that is still growing again, we've talked about, there was so much change in the off season, coaching staff, players, bullpen, all, all going on to be able to come into a situation like this and know, you know, what a sweep would mean and, and to be able to pull it off and, and go on this late season run. And is just a testament to where this team has grown and to be able to, to be able to come through in the clutch and time and time again, um, this team's won so many close games this year and, and found different ways to win. It, it just speaks to how this team has grown and, and, and the different guys contributing, you know, Troy Clanch is a guy we, we talked about at the beginning of the season the job that he was doing. We're working with the pitching staff. Well, now he's 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 obviously done it with the bat as well as as time's gone along. And um, just a guy that's emerged as a really really important piece for for A and M. You know, Trevor Warner was the guy early in the year, and then you know obviously missed some time with injury. Different guys stepped up on that side of things. It's just been you know Ryan Targosh. We talked about him quite a bit. Uh, just different guys have stepped up at different points during the year and, and given this team a lot of depth, which I think bodes well for them heading into the NCAA tournament. Yeah, it's, they're going to be fun to watch. So, you know, a, a different sport. We joked last <laughs> week about Buzz Williams taking advice from, from Jimbo Fisher and, and, and messing with the roster numbers and getting 30 people in a class. Yeah. How did a and a and just got its biggest Wichita State transfer since Billy Kennedy, you know, picking up, I, you know, my, the guy that I'm an expert on. I, what's his, what's Dexter his Dennis, Dexter Dennis. So get the clipboard out for him. Cause um, you know, a, he was the AAC defensive player of the year. And you also asked me last week about uh, projected starting lineup. And the we got to change Dennis, now. I think Dennis probably moves into that starting lineup and you probably see a lineup of Wade Taylor Manny Obasiki, Tyrese Radford, Dexter Dennis, and Henry Coleman, um, which is just a super versatile lineup that can switch one through five. And yeah, it was funny. I was talking with, um, I was heading over to, uh, to last Wednesday, I was heading over to a um, uh, couple schools along the area. And I checked in with a couple people, you know, does A&M have room to add somebody else? And the answer I got back was, oh, yep. We have room to add one more. I don't know if we will. And then Dennis obviously had his decision date coming up. And I checked with a couple different, you know, couple different people. And, you know, Vanderbilt had just picked up a commitment and were full, um, you know, not following the Jimbo Fisher strategy. And, uh, you know, I was like, well, you know, here we go. A&M does, is going to, is going to go ahead and pick up, pick up another commitment. And numbers are going to be interesting. I mean, it's, we talked about this last week that that's going to have to be sorted out probably over the next couple of weeks. And um, I have no doubt that they, they have a plan in place and um, you know, we'll probably, we could see a guy or two enter the transfer portal. Um, and it's just going to be really interesting numbers wise, because 
they've got like 15 or 16 guys right now. And, uh, you know, you can, you can only be at 13. Um, obviously it's a scholarship limit for basketball. And so it's going to be, it's going to be really fascinating, but, um, you know, adding a guy like Dexter Dennis is just, you know, A&M was, was projected in a lot of polls to be a top 25 program to begin this to begin next year. I believe CBS sports had them at number 19. The expectations for this team are going to be as high as they've been since Buzz Williams has been here. There's, there's no, no doubting that with four starters returning. Um, and to be able to add a guy like Dexter Dennis is just like the perfect defensive fit for A&M and, and another really good transfer class. I, the final point I'll make is just, I, I kind of told people just during the year, but AM is when it comes to the transfer portal, kind of looks at it in two ways. They look at it, we can get guys that can hopefully contribute immediately, a guy like Solomon Washington. But if we think a guy is, and I think a lot of schools are looking at it now this way, if we can, and it goes for football too, if we can get a guy that's maybe borderline, maybe get a, you know, maybe need a couple of years of development. We're just going to go to the transfer portal and get that guy out of the transfer portal that's had the couple of years of development and not have to wait to see if a kid does develop into something we can go get in the transfer portal. And that's that's kind of where a and is now with 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 using the transfer portal and, and picking up four guys is another example of that. I missed out my joke earlier. I said he was the biggest transfer from Wichita yeah. State since Billy Kennedy. Okay, Kennedy's there now. I met Mark Turgeon. Mark Turgeon was Mark he, Turgeon. Um, there he came to him from Wichita State. I was like, <laughs> I knew Kennedy had the ties there. I he's there now as an assistant. But uh, <laughs> yeah, biggest biggest A and M uh, Wichita State transfer since since Mark Turgeon. Uh, there we go. That's that, that that's an A and M that's an A and M favorite. Um, he was over at was, yeah. That'll the I think A and M fans would. would Here's love the secret: it. don't leave A and M as a basketball coach. Because, yeah, don't leave A and M. I mean, Billy, Billy Clyde Gillespie. I mean, his, you know, <laughs> his career good. sort of yeah didn't you know Turgeon had a couple of good years at at Maryland, but man, if you're doing well at A and M, just stay at A and M and just stick there. And do even better. You be, you know they built something now, and uh, you know just just stick there. A and M fans are gonna love you and. Uh, you know, do you, you'll get a chance to build something. And, uh, you know, I, I think when this team is playing well, there's certainly a lot of excitement around the basketball program. You know, for a couple of years there, it might have been kind of me just talking to myself in the message boards on the live <laughs> updates threads. But that's okay. Years. I can talk to myself. Last year? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, last year, the year before. Um Maybe the year before that a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> that's you know when once we started to get to the NCC tournament, um, you know things started to come alive a little bit, and and, and folks were joining in there. But uh, you know, kudos to the staff, and uh, you know I think that's why moving forward, I would just preach patience. There's no doubt, you know, A and M's got to you know land the top fifty prospects and all that sort of stuff, but. <laughs> at, the, the the work that a staff does is not done until the transfer portal is done. That's just kind of the way things work right now is, you know, the transfer portal is just completely a whole different animal. And, and you can add so many immediate contributors. I mean, there was over a thousand kids in the portal this year. I mean, it's crazy, but um, you know, to be able to add some immediate contributors and look at the class as a whole, I think A&M fans feel pretty satisfied about where things come out now if, if guys are able to pan out, but um, yeah, I thought it, I did think of our, our jokes last week. We were, we were just one step ahead of everybody with no. The, oh yeah. What? I mean, la- we made the jokes because last week was our, the pickup was like, wait, how many are on the roster even at that point? And now it's like, yeah. okay, did they expand the roster? So, well, that's be, what I, yeah. cause there is, there has been talk about, you know, scholarship limits and all that sort of stuff. But I was thinking, no, is Buzz Williams like three steps ahead of everybody else right now? Where, you know, in July they're going to announce like they're lifting the scholarship limits, and and they'll have they'll they'll be a, they'll have a loaded roster, but um, you know, just a ton of options to turn to, and and a deep bench. You know, they did announce to uh, two of the transfers last week. They announced Anderson Garcia and Julius Marble for Mississippi State and um, and Michigan State, um, and you know. No career games. A and M didn't play Wichita State last year, so no no, no career no. games. But I did notice. I did notice the A and M staff did not sneak this by me. That in the release they did talk about the big game that 
Anderson Garcia had against a and m last in the regular season finale so they they took notice they took oh, yeah. notice that was that was in the release that he had a career high <laughs> yes. against a and m so <laughs> that was definitely in there um so with that yeah we'll we'll see i'm sure i'm sure at this time next week we'll be talking about another another a and m basketball no yeah the next I, the next two basketball transfers just yeah, yeah. you got to come back and we'll... <laughs> yeah you got to come back and and see when the roster's up to to eighteen nineteen kids and no, they they at this point they're probably now with with Memorial Day coming around. Probably this is probably it now, and um, I'd expect you know some news on 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 where things are going to shake out in terms of guys returning and and things like that um, to be organized by probably by the Memorial Day when kids start moving in. I think I think we'll have a good idea of what this roster looks like, and as promised, when we when we do have a clearer idea, I will do a rundown of of the roster. And I know that was a request on, on the board. So keep an eye out for that. I will, I will definitely run down the roster and, and, and help people get to know this, this new look class. So um, with that, I think we're, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, another, it's going to be another big week. Uh, I'll be out at the uh, South Oak Cliff spring game this, this week. Uh, Malik Muhammad and, and Jamon Thomas will be in action on Friday night. Uh, but otherwise spring is, Spring has kind of come to a close for a lot of programs and um, we'll, we'll start turning our attention towards summer and, and summer camps as well. So um, Brian, anything else to add before we, before we jump off? Nah, nope. I think we're good. We're just ready for spring evaluations. And then you and I'll be out at all those summer camps and, you know, they'll be absolutely loaded. So make sure yeah. you guys come on the board. Follow along. Follow along. So we'll, we'll be, we'll have you guys covered with all the latest on that. Um, as always, if you um, if you like these videos, uh, be sure to give us a subscribe to our YouTube page and um, on it, give us a like and, and five star review on Apple and Spotify, um, and follow us there to to get a notification every time a new podcast drops. Which is um, right now every every Monday we're we're dropping a new uh, new podcast, so you'll get the latest on uh, on when the uh, when the podcasts are coming out and. Um, and we'll have you covered with all the latest. So with that, we're going to go ahead and sign it off and, and have a great week. And, and we'll see you guys soon.